Kingston. Welcome back to live coverage of GP Prague, ladies and gentlemen. It's my great pleasure to welcome you to the feature match area for round number eight. My name's Riley, and I'm in the booth joined by the Pro Tour champion, Zimon Gertz. And a great pleasure to have your company as ever, Zimon. Like race. And I tell you what, we've got a, uh, got a real gangbuster in the feature match area today. We've got Jasper Grimmer. He's from Berlin, a, 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 uh, a city that's known for the particular, for the fineness of the skill of the Magic players who live there. And uh, Alexander, and, and their handsomeness as well, and just general bearing, I would say. Some of the and best and some of the worst. Some of the best, some of the best as well, I would say, yes. A lot of the best. And Alexander Pravalev as well, he's on the right-hand side of your screen. Both these guys at seven. And, oh, now, my friends, I know there's going to be raised eyebrows around the world when we're looking at Herr Grimmer as he plays many of these cards. That is not a Darker Wastes from 8th edition, as you may be thinking it is. That is a white-bordered, flooded strand, because Jasper Grimmer... Enjoys taking to his cards with a, uh, a particularly, uh, particularly coarse eraser. So uh, when you're seeing many of these special whiteboarded versions of Delver of Secrets and this sort of a thing, it, it's, all, uh, it's all homemade, my friends. So clearing up that confusion right away. But Alexander Prevalev on the right-hand side of your screen. We've got uh, Grimmer playing Miracles. Prevalev on the other hand, uh, we've got uh, on a slightly different deck here. Hi. Looks like uh, Shardless, Shardless Sultai. Shardless Sultai, indeed. Kicking things off with a, uh, a him to Turak here. What do you think about him to Turak and how good or bad it is against Miracles? Discard, a hot, discard against Miracles, hotly contested. It's, it's not that there were, you aren't winning the game because you resolve him to Turak. Mm. But, I mean, taking, taking two random cards, uh, how bad can it be? Yep, there we go. Force of Will and uh, Arid Mesa, the hits there. Pravliev. And it's back to the German now. Miracle's a deck that, once it has a top in play, mm. can certainly uh, play off the top of his deck. So uh, I even if, if you have zero cards, you still have to be scared of, of a Miracle player. So here we go. Double Flooded Strand being, f uh, being sacked here. And Grimm is going to go through his library. One land, two lands here. And we're going to see Counterbalance here. Yeah, this is the, the typical lineup where you have uh, island, island planes, uh, tap out, not tap out for corner bounds, but tap out in a way that you have one mana open for, for the activation. And this is very strong, but um, that's what a Breptica is for, yeah. after all. Yeah, and Providiev certainly came prepared with four copies of it in his, uh, in his main deck. Uh, a huge boost to any, any deck playing those colors. A Breptica, you don't leave home without it. So Previliev here, after creeping tar pit swamp. So he wants to navigate his third turn. Looks like it's going to be a bayou. You're going to snap off an abrupt decay straight away. Haven't got a good look at his hand yet, Zimon. No, he's playing very... Holding them in a very reserved way. Yeah, playing his cards close to his chest, you might say. Yes, on the other hand, showing off his whiteboard oh, with yeah. goodness. Check this out, he says. Look at these bad boys. So far, the Shardless Sultai decks we've seen have been quite heavily black, mm. with um, Home to Tarek being, being quite a popular card. I was discussing this last night at dinner, the fact that uh, the, the blue is almost turning into something of a splash color, really, in the, uh, in the Sultai decks. And there is Abrupt Decay, as we mentioned, taking care of that counterbalance. Not so good against top. Brainstorm as well. So Previlev drawing three. Going to put two back. See if he's got a fetch land as well to really... Uh, solidify a, a, a rock-solid hand here. Back they go. An, an end-of-turn brainstorm is usually a sign that uh, at least one shuffle effect is already waiting in yeah. the wings. Yeah, there's a Fetcherino in hand, I would imagine, here for Previliev. What's a Fetcherino? It's like a fetch land. Slightly different. Because you don't crack it, you, you give it a Crackerino. So there seems to be some sort of discussion about the markings on uh, on Previlio's uh, cards here. See a little bit of texture on both the uh, on both the 
Brainstorm and the Creepy Tar Pit, tar pit there. And uh, it seems to be in Cyrillic, I think, as well. So maybe uh, Glimmer just asking exactly what's going on, what's been written on these cards. It's a valid question, but uh, unfortunately, probably one that doesn't have a quick answer. No, it doesn't have an immediate answer. I imagine with the uh, well, with the number of judges that uh, from the no diff number of different countries here in Prague, I'm sure there's one that's going to be able to decipher it. But uh, in the meantime, uh, Zimon, I'm curious to know your thoughts generally on this matchup. These are arguably the uh, the top two decks in the format. Um, what are your thoughts generally on, on how these match up here? I mean, you've got to come prepared to face uh, Shardless Altai. You've got to come prepared to face Miracles. That's fine. What about these two, two decks actually going at, at, a, at a, each other? I, I think it's it's mostly about sideboard cards, yeah. um, as uh, I think a lot of the matchups are. But uh, one one card that stands out to me, for example, is uh, Jace the Mind Sculptor. Mm. You, can, you can often resolve it. Oh, look at this. As we move across now to a different match here, we've got Nicholas Kronberger against Rom uh, Roman Leonov here. So these guys look to be well and truly underway. Leonov on Painted Servant here with an Abrupt Decay taking care of an ensnaring bridge. And in comes some kind of token. And we're just in time to see the game end. Absolutely no idea what went on there. Unfortunately, we weren't um, given enough time to have a look. That must have been a Marit Lash. Must have been a 2020 Marit Lash. token. They would have done it there because, of course, the ensnaring bridge may have been the only thing holding that off. So looks like Kronberger playing some kind of life from the Loam deck. Interesting to see the different number of these ones. We saw the Knight of the Reliquary-based ones earlier on. I think that was one of them as well. The traditional land one playing 30, 35 lands, whatever. Maybe not quite as popular as, uh, as the Knight decks. Yeah, the... It's not really truly a land deck. Mm. Uh, it's it's like the Punishing Fire, uh, Knight of the Relic Ray deck, but it has a lot of the same attributes. Yeah, a lot of these late game value engines that really seek to uh, to close out the game in in a way that's very difficult for uh, for game uh, for other decks to sort of contend with. You know, yeah. um, here we seem to have some uh, have a judge translating what's been written on these cards here. So Grimmer exercising his right to have uh, every last scrap of information. No, also there, there's a general question of what uh, what tax on, on which card is, is legal. Mm. As we continue now and see how things are going to turn out between these two. Of course, this was, uh, I think, in the end step of, uh, of Grimmer's fourth turn here. We saw the Abrupt Decay followed up by the Brainstorm. I don't think the Brainstorm's yet... No, the Brainstorm has resolved. We've yes. seen the Brainstorm resolve. So it now looks like Pavilyev uh, will be going to untap as soon as uh, Grimmer is satisfied with uh, that his request has been fulfilled. There might be more cards coming in the future, though. Yeah, maybe that, uh, that Russian judge might have to stick around. We'll see. We'll see, we'll see. And it looks like we're finally get to go, going to get the game moving on now. So, Pravilev is going to start his fourth turn. This brings me back to Jace. So, uh, J Jace is a card that you can actually resolve, not easily, but m more easily than some of the other cards in mm -hmm. this uh, in this matchup. And on both sides uh, of the equation, it's a super scary threat yeah. to deal with. Yeah, very difficult. Doesn't die to Abrupt Decay from Shardless Sultai and doesn't die to Swords to Plowshares or Terminus for Miracles. It's almost impossible to counter with Counterbalance. Yeah. So there's a lot of things going on. Uh, it's not a creatureless matchup, but the board is often going to be devoid of creatures. Yeah. And with, uh, with Miracles really relying very heavily on stuff like uh, Council's Judgment and um, Sultai relying on things like Maelstrom Pulse. Uh, you, I think you're right, Jace is one of those sort of the, the, uh, the cards that can smash the uh, game wide open. Especially because if you activate it two times, so if you untap with the Jace, yep. uh, your chances of winning go You're go a way long, up. long way ahead for sure. Here's him to Turak. I think Grimmer only has two cards left, might be three. He may have some kind of response here. Looks like we're going to see a Flooded Strand uh, cracked here. Potentially looking for um, maybe no, there's not too much you can find with a with a sense as dividing top to protect you. So Grimmer down to 17 now. Gonna find another island here. I I do like the play of um, protecting your hand with brainstorm yeah. to a degree, 
but you, you don't always have that luxury. Oh, there it is. There it is, yes, indeed. So Grimm are going to be able to, uh, to replace... Well, have a look at the top three and pick the two that he wants to lose here. And this is a nice little mind twist for uh, Previlio. Nice little, nice little wits end. Interested to see that Grimmer is searching up basics. Uh, obviously, uh, Shardless Sultai often running Wastelands, and we see in this list as well three copies of Wasteland. Yes, al although Wasteland not the not the key card of the matchup no. or anything. No, no life from the loam to to punish you, especially in game one. So away go two cards there. We I think we get a good look at them: a white card and a blue card. And it's back to Pravilyev now to continue with his fourth turn. Yeah. There we go. Get a good An look. Another at brainstorm it. was hit. brainstorm, and it was a terminus as well. Pravilyev down to 19 after that fetch land activation. We see so many little uh, one life jumps uh, <laughs> with between fetch lands and forces of will here. Tropical Island found for him hit there. And now Pravilyev with, is it a Deathrite Shaman? That's a nice start. That's a nice one indeed. Grimmer has a look at the top uh, top three. Draws a Volcanic Island. Force of Will floating on the top of his library. But with being Hellbent, a little bit of selection with the uh, with the top, but he's not in a good spot. No, but he is playing Miracle, so he, he is uh, very far from conceding here. Mm -hmm. He has... Um, still cards that can be hugely relevant. Creeping Tarpid is a huge threat to Jace. So he kind of wants to um, miracle his way to victory. Also missing a, a second white source right now, though. Yeah, after having fetched out those basics pretty aggressively from the fetch lands, uh, no second white for something like uh, tr Entreat the Angels. Here's Shardless, uh, a Shardless Agent, however. We're going to see Cascade trigger. So there's a, that looks like a, oh, that's a Toxic Deluge, so that's no good. But we do have Ancestral Visions. This is exactly why, what this is the, the what the deck's built around. Yeah. O also shuffling away land and yeah. Uh, Deluge. Yeah. Deluge, not the card you want. Here's three cards for Previlio. So he refills quite nicely. And of course has little Tutu uh, waiting around in the wings as well. So really good, really good turn for Previlio there. Striking while the iron is hot. This looks like he only has to close out the game now. Yeah. Don't overextend into um, Terminus and then win uh, maybe even on the back of, of Creeping Tarpid, which is uh, really difficult for, for Gilmar to deal with. So Grimmer draws a Force of Will. On the top, I think it's uh, f a Force of Will and another... I saw a white card there. It might be a Monastery Mentor, I think. Previliev now with a Brainstorm. Both of these guys have obviously played pretty tight magic throughout the tournament uh, to be sitting at 7-0. and oh. Uh, at least Fayas by now he's very very experienced, but I I'm honestly thinking how how long can you afford uh, this game to go? Uh, like just from a from a perspective of round time. Yeah, that's a very that's a very uh, cognizant uh, thing for for the miracle players around the world to re to remember. It's hugely relevant the fact that uh, you know in a situation like this, as you say, Zimon, maybe the game is all but over, and uh, it might be time to pack him up, go to game two to give yourself enough time to win two 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 more games. Monastery Mentor does change the, the equation somewhat. Uh, you now have a, a very reasonable way to win quickly. Previlia putting uh, Grimmer on the clock here with the Death Rite Shaman activation. Going to get in with the Shardless Agent. Grimmer with a, a Force of Will in hand. Previlia with four mana. Is it going to be Jace? Here's the Mind Sculptor. And it's a Force of Will hard cast. The secret mode, of course, on Force of Will. It does actually counter spells for five mana. Not the most aggressively costed uh, counter spell, Zimon. No. Sees a lot of play all the same. And a little bit of a mana boost from the uh, Death Rite Shaman pairing at a Sylvan Library. Well, that's a nice way to keep the cards flowing. We've talked already about the fact that Shardless Sultai has a number of flex slots in the main, a couple of interesting ones that it can include, you know, your Toxic Deluges, your main Maelstrom Pulses. Sometimes it's Sylvan Library as well. Yes. Uh, looked like Pravilev did miss an attack there with the oh, Shardless with the Agent. Sh yeah, <laughs> I wonder what the look of confusion the was, yeah. So uh, two points of life missed there, unfortunately, for uh, Pravilev. Grimmer will be happy about that slight error there. But now Pravilev with... Uh, Sylvan Library, 
and it looks like another Jace. How, how long is Jasper going to keep this up? And it's a brainstorm. Yeah, a little bit of an in, a really insurmountable board at the moment for, uh, for the German. I think Pravilev has about 10 cards in hand. Yeah, look at that. Jasper with just one. Those hymns really getting it done. But also Jasper's draw really not producing anything. I think that's a great point as well, yeah. The, the discard is one thing, but, but if you only draw forces and uh, nothing of, of, uh, of value... Yeah, I think there are a few times w in this game where, where something else could have been, uh, another relevant card could have been played, a threat, a J, something like that. But uh, as it is now, Previliev holding uh, all, the, uh, all the cards. And it's a suspended Ancestral Vision. Yeah, the, the loyalty counter, unfortunately, um, not very easy to, to make out. It is on three. Super it is sweet on three, dice, yes. but it is a uh, die, I should say. But uh, yeah, a little bit difficult to see there. Previliev here. Happy to go through the motions to uh, to close this game out as we see an underground sea. And two more life uh, chipped away off Grimmer's life total. Exciting the brainstorm. Grimmer down to 13 now. As we see a uh, counter come off the ancestral vision. Previliev activates the Sylvan Library. Yeah, so from, from the three cards... He he has basically free free choice. He can yeah. take m multiple. He doesn't have to, of course, not with not with this board. So then another brainstorm now here from Jace, the mind sculptor. Going to put two back on top. But uh, yeah, drawing three cards a turn, yeah, pretty decent spot to be in. In comes the shardless agent. And this is nice. This is conservative play from Previlio. He's not overextending into a terminus. Not in any position to. W he knows the game is more or less uh, his to lose. He's a Tarmogoyf. He, he could he could be finishing this game uh, much faster. Yeah. But also this way he ensures uh, victory in game one and then. Yeah. Maybe absolutely. maybe he gains some information. Of course he's also revealing information, but I think the um, the slots in the shardless bug deck are um, r really really um, fixed. So here's the terminus at end of turn for Grimmer. Previliev, I think, does have a force of will, and I think we're going to see it hard cast here. There it is. Grimmer. With, uh, that looks like a Vendillion click to me there. Yes, indeed. So Vendillion click in the hand of Grimmer here with a hard cast force of will on the stack targeting Terminus. What, what's... What's going on exactly? Where, where, in which uh, Where's the phase? Where's the we? end step of Previliev's turn? And is the terminus on the stack? The terminus on the stack after the uh, the top. But then top Jasper the has to pay mana for it. I think there's another yeah. uh, rules confusion with uh, a question whether the force can actually be cast okay. already. So there's the miracle, uh, the miracle trigger. So that get that gets put on the stack. It's going to cast it, and now we have the force of will there. So Jasper Grimmer. Not doing a whole lot to help his opponent to understand that situation, it seemed. And a Vendelian click to finish his off uh, his turn. Down comes the V-click. What does Previlio have to say about that? Oh, read him and weep, he says. Yeah, double force of will, brainstorm, and a death right shaman. Grimmer writes these down. Previliev, hydrates, so important. Got to keep those fluids up, Zimmer. And Grimmer says, no, nah, no, nah, that's all good, man. That's all good. So Monastery Mentor in hand, in addition to the freshly drawn uh, Sensei's Divining Top here. Grimmer obviously not looking to uh, expose that uh, Monastery Mentor. It would seem that if um, Jasper is just playing for... Um, oh, the sorts of pleasures, excuse me. ...for information, then he wouldn't reveal something like a main deck uh, yeah. monastery mentor to his opponent. But no, it was a source of pleasure after all, so I've made a fool of myself. And it's back to Previliev. Still with this, uh, these uh, 
four damage a turn. Now only drawing two cards a turn as well. Uh, he doesn't have to take the damage. The, the library is um, optional, so he can take extra cards, yeah. but he doesn't have to. No, no, no. The four damage a turn from the um, from the uh, agent and the ah uh, he yeah, he he's has doing he has four. four he's doing okay. four a turn. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I misunderstood. But uh, creeping tarpet should, I think, uh, come in there. Ah, yes, There's there we go. So little downside to just basically increasing the clock. So, Grimmer has another look at the top of his library. There is the Monastery Mentor. And he's going to take five. Go down to four. And really, I mean, if he gives Provilev another turn, that, that's going to be all she wrote here. And Jasper knows it as well because yeah. he knows the top three cards. He can, he can see one deeper. Uh, and then if, if there's nothing, the, the game is over. So Snapcaster Mage. But I don't think there's much that's going to get the German out of this spot here. And indeed not. So we're going to scoop him up and we're going to go to game two. Grimmer there drawing that out to the painful end. But in, at the end of the day, 0-1. The Shardle Assault High deck getting amongst it. Let's have a look at what's going on in the board of these decks. We've seen a Gideon ally of Zendikar in the feature match already. A standard powerhouse, of course, making its way to Legacy. And there are two copies of it. In Grimmer's sideboard, in addition to that, Containment Priest, Rest in Peace, Blood Moon, Moat, Flusterstorm, Pyroblast, REB, and two copies of Disenchant. I'm a big fan of this sideboard. I like the way that it's been put together. On the other side of things, however, what are we looking at? Uh, also, uh, Wild makes lots of one-offs. Um, two three-offs in Meddling Mage and Thoughtseize. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, all one each, uh, Baveful Strix, Nullwer, Pithing Needle, Graf Digger's Cage, Scrubland, very interesting. Uh, Knight of Souls Betrayal, Toxic Deluge, Gargari Charm, and Nihalt Spellbomb. Yeah, the three copies of Crisper Cooler in the sideboard there, of course, because of uh, st the Storm matchup, other combo stuff like that. Storm has a huge, uh, hugely difficult time against Meddling Mage, and the Scrabland brought in to to power out this splash. Uh, as a result, are really shoring up or trying to get get back into that match. Y you go from uh, the four white sources of Death Rite Shaman mm. uh, up to I don't know how many. For every every fetch hand, uh, I think it's almost about twelve. All almost all, all fetch hands will, yeah. will be able to get your white sources then. Yes. Yeah, the the Verdant Catacombs polluted Delta. So yeah, so twelve all told, or well, thirteen even with the with the land itself. M Meddling Mage is like a, a little bit of a little bit unreliable against miracles. There are yeah. certainly cards you want to call. But there is, for every card you want to s you want to um, name, there's two others that deal with the meddling mage. So yeah, it's not like in Storm where you can just kind of play it, and, and if they don't have the chain of vapor, then you kind of win on the spot. That's right. So uh, maybe not bring it in here, but Pithing Needle, I think, in a great spot here. You know, maybe a Golgari Charm as well. Not sure about that, but uh, what are you looking at? Thoughtseize, um, Nullrot. Oh yeah, for um, sure. Thoughtseize always. Yes, I think. Uh, uh, also, Golgari Charm. We we had this situation before where uh, the one Golgari Charm is a card that you. H how bad can it be? Like if it's if it yeah. doesn't have a target, then you're probably probably doing fine. Yeah, I, that's uh, that's a really good way of saying it. Really, uh, it you know, and and after having seen Snapcaster Mage, after having seen Vendillion Click, I think you're even more likely to be bringing uh, to be bringing it in. Uh, not only because it can sometimes clean up all those mentor tokens, but also as you say, because it uh, you know. Its worst case scenario is uh, is not so bad. And in, in addition, though, uh, you know the the miracles deck will will have to uh, adopt a different position here, a, a sort of a different posture as it approaches this game. Uh, Gideon ally of Zendikar, I think, in a in a, in a very good spot against uh, a deck like Shardless Bug. When when did we see um, Gideon uh, make an appearance? I think it was just only last round with uh, with Tim and Matei. There was uh, there was uh, I know a horde of night tokens being spewed on. Also the from board. also by Miracles. I wasn't. I didn't get a good look at exactly what was going on as I was whipping past the uh, the broadcast. But uh, I do know that uh, yeah, not the first time we've seen him today. No, the the standard walkers are all over the place. Yeah, that's it. Jace, uh, Jace Rin's Prodigy getting it done. Chandra Flamecaller was in the board of someone earlier on today. Yeah, we're seeing it happen. But uh, Gideon, uh, this is something else we've mentioned as well, mate. This is something else we've uh, we've seen today. Cards across four against Abrupt Decay, it's actually a huge benefit. There's not a lot of clean answers to a card like Gideon. No, no, absolutely. And especially if people are preparing for Mentor, mm. <laughs> it, it can be like this kind of... Uh, Big surprise. Mm. Yeah, also, like the they, they work quite well together. The mentor and the uh, and the Gideon, of course, working really well uh, in concert with each other. But uh, if you can find the the time to sort of force through a Gideon, whether it's 
when they're tapped out and don't have a force or whether it's you've got that protect like interaction of your own to get it onto the battlefield there's not a lot of cards that can remove it cleanly you know so Praviliev and Jasper Grimm are looking at the uh, their opening hands it looks like Grimm is happy with his but Praviliev's going to try try his luck with six So, in the hand of the German here, I can see a flooded strand, a ponder. Didn't get a good look at those. what else was going on in there. Previliev, on the other hand, as we say, down to six. He'll be looking to, uh, to cement his spot at eight and oh here, going into round number nine. Both players are. Uh, everybody at seven oh is. This is... Um this this used to be more pronounced when you needed uh, twenty one points to make day two. Yeah, but um, a lot of players once they had the twenty one points were going into into this kind of re relax mode. Yeah, uh, I did it, <laughs> and and you lose more matches uh, yeah. if if you don't uh, care for the outcome. But these guys right at the top, and hopefully they'll be. Uh They'll be firing on all cylinders as we head into game number two of round number eight here from GP Prague live, my friends, live and uninterrupted. And I tell you what, it's been a great pleasure to bring you this uh, this legacy GP from around the world, wherever you are. Thank you once again for joining us today. Zimon Gertzen, the Pro Tour champion, sitting next to Riley Knight in the booth. Supported, of course, by an all-star coverage cast. Rashad Miller to my left, behind, beside him, Tim Willoughby, Tobias Henk as well. Matej Zadelkai, Stephen Leeming, the big rig, Neil Rigby, and of course... Rich Hagen. Where would we be without him, Zimon? I don't even want to think about don't it. Don't even want to think about it. A universe without Rich Hagen. What kind of universe is that, my friends? Not one that I want to live in, certainly. Here is Sensei's Dividing Top on turn one. A great start for Miracles. A, a universe without Sensei's Dividing Top, however. That, that, I think, would be a little bit more palatable. Interesting to see the debate about Sensei's Dividing Top because no one has any problems with its power level. Everyone has problems with the fact that it adds, like, 15 minutes to every game. It's it's also on the I think uh, probably in the in the top fifteen most powerful cards in Legacy. Yeah, you'd say so. Yes. Okay. Just from its from its effect alone. Yeah. The the thing that keeps it in check is that a lot of decks don't want this kind of effect, so you you have to work you have to yeah. work to to, yeah, to it, get it. Yeah. It, it it kind of hamstrings deck building in a way that you can't you, you can't just slam it in anything. No, you see, like maybe a storm deck or other combo decks play will play it as a one-off. Yeah, actually, I had some uh, had some friends over in the week who were playing storm this week. Uh, they're doing pretty well on the floors out there. Toralf Severin and uh, and Yamin Kalf, and uh, oh, they had a heated argument about whether one sensei's divining top could find its way into a storm deck. Yeah, in my experience, the energy you spend on these arguments is uh, not worth the percentage points. Oh, really? You, you get from the decision. The if it's a, if it's a close decision, it's yeah, not worth well, arguing about. No. Oh, mate, come on. I think that's Just what Magic players love to do flip a coin more than anything else. Yes, of course. Number if one, you take argue. Number two, play Magic. If you take enjoyment out of it, yeah. that's another topic. Oh, no, absolutely. Here's the Deathrite Shaman being swordsed. He's going to hit the XL zone for Previliev. He'll be unhappy about that because there's no, there's no real better start for Shardless, uh, Shardless Bug than a turn one, uh, uh, turn one Deathrite Shaman. The Salto deck really looking to uh, hit some of its three drops. Liliana, Liliana of the Veil, uh, Shardless Agent, nice and early. Previliev Pro also with the with the plan of getting a basic swamp, mm. so that Deathrite Shaman is always castable, and even should there be a Blood Moon, you you have a chance of getting out of it. Yeah, I think a pretty pretty good play there from uh, from Previliev, uh, given the fact that his opponent has two in the board, and I think it's an auto include when you play against Shardless Saltai given the fact that they have one, two at the most basic lands. I think um, from what we've seen, all the, b both sides of the matchup were, were aware of that, um, from, from the sideboarding and also from the decisions what to fetch. Yeah. Not, not only in this match, but uh, we've seen this match. No, I was, was going to say, I don't think we've seen anyone really walk into a Blood Moon no. this, uh, this weekend. So La lands and uh, if your spells are so cheap that you need very few lands it becomes even more crucial to think about which lands you want yeah and uh, blood moon is a is a very relevant card yeah it's it's, it's it can be absolutely crucial to make sure that you're going to be able to enact some kind of a game plan here and we're seeing uh we're seeing neither of these players really getting on the front foot with enacting some kind no, of no very very slow start for yeah. both of them 
Shardless Salt Eyes, we say, difficult to really pin down exactly what the deck's trying to do. Basically, just score a bunch of two for ones, three for ones in some cases, him to Turak, Ancestral Vision, Liliana of the Veil, cards that, that have sort of a built in uh, uh, advantage. If, if you get your opponent down to zero cards and you still have five in your hand, yeah. you, can win with, you can win with the most mediocre creatures. But even if you've got zero cards in hand, you're only one um, shardless, uh, shardless agent away from then having effectively two, three. Coming, coming back uh, out of nowhere. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of Jund. I know I've made that comparison a couple of times this weekend, but it really is one of those decks that, uh, that just is, is, has game against everything, more or less. Yes, I except that um, in Legacy in particular, uh, it's more of the gameplay revolves around cards in, in hand. Mm and cards that could be drawn in the future, as opposed to permanence. So it's, it's less of a slugfest, yeah. a visible slugfest, but more of a, um, a resource battle that involves hand, gra uh, graveyard sometimes, libraries, uh, everything. And the stack, most importantly. Yeah. We see so much stack interaction in this format. Here's Jace the Mind Sculptor. No stack interaction when it uh, comes to casting this guy at the moment for Previlia, because that's, uh, that's come down and brainstorming immediately. Grimmer, we're talking about enacting some kind of battle plan, not able to get uh, the wheels, uh, wheels rolling here. If, uh, if you look at this game in a vacuum, yeah. you have, you just, there were just two people doing nothing, yeah. and then one person cast a Jason on turn four. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, uh, that's basically it. And it, it resolved. Yeah. That was the most surprising part. Yeah, it's interesting to see Grimmer's hand, a full grip, but nothing like a force or anything else. But now I think a red source for um, Red Elemental Blast. So an Arid Mesa in, in hand for Grimmer here. And, a, and an REB as well, as you can see. It's going to be counterbalanced, though. Surely he's not going to let Previliev untap. No. No, okay. this, is, uh, this is just if uh, Previliev forces, yeah. you have a, a minimal chance yeah. tiny, of a, tiny of a blind, uh, blind flip. Yeah. It's just technically correct to cast, to cast the counterbalance first. Also, okay, if uh, Previliev forces the... Um, counterbalance, I think you're happy to uh, kill Jace in exchange. Yeah, for sure. All right. So we've got a counterbalance on the, p on, the, uh, on the battlefield for Grimmer. So he's one step close to enacting a game plan. But what's mir Miracles is basically trying to contain an opponent until it can win with something like Entreat or a Jace. Yes. Um, the one part of the combo is already gone again. Uh, oh, er earlier, okay. Jasper decided to um, shuffle away his, his top because he needed to, to get some stuff going. There's Gideon. There is the ally of Zendikar, as, uh, as we mentioned before. So Thoughtsea is revealing the hand of, uh, of Grimmer here for Previliev. V-click, V-click. Brainstorm, Gideon, and a Swords to Plowshares. And Previliev, wisely choosing the Gideon, doesn't have a great answer to it, really. No way, no how. Yes, whereas two Vendillion clicks are actually not that scary when you know about them. And uh, also taking one of them, not, not, a, good, not a great effect. Tarmogoyf now, the biggest baddest thumper, and he is a very big bad thumper. It looks like we've got instant sorcery land planeswalker. Is there a creature is hanging out there as well? No, the death Rite shaman ate a source to plowshares. Another good reason to take uh, Gideon. Mm -hmm. Pump the Tarmogoyf, grow the Tarmogoyf. That's right. Of course, the Jace in the uh, in the bin already doing that, but uh, yeah, never never hurts to have a second copy. The, the question is, how long is Tamara of surviving? We do, have a f we do have a, uh, a fifth card type. Instant land, sorcery, planeswalker. And something else is evading me there. Must be a creature of some kind, perhaps. So Grimmer, with the answer to the Tamagoyf in the form of Swords to Plowshares here. Here's three mana. Four mana. And it's another Jace. Grimmer hard pressed to answer that. No, that's fine. Second Jace here, so that's uh second Jace going unanswered. It's gonna be a free but free brainstorm. Yes, but if it's only a free brainstorm, I think it's fine because that makes Vendillion click a qu quick click quite powerful. I'm not sure if, if brainstorming there is correct. You want a fate seal? Yes, yes. Actually, I think it's maybe not if you have a like a good answer to the Vendillion click, but why 
why brainstorm if you can just uh, fate seal brainstorm and have get basically the same effect? Sylvan Library now the play for Previlia. And in comes the Tarmogoy. Looks like Grimma is going to get the uh, snap off the click. Yes, and he's, he's also being rewarded for uh, being patient here. Uh, he could have uh, swords already, but then he, uh, he would look much weaker against um, Jace. So, Grimma clicking himself, revealing an, uh, the, the second click. Yeah. And there is the... Uh, that's taking care of the Jace there. Playing on autopilot almost. Yeah. <laughs> no, but this, this is what happens when you are uh, just relieved that, that this line is actually available to you. Yeah. I think this was a, a bit of a... A bit of um, a loose... A uh, gift. Yeah. A little, like a, a tiny, tiny edge. Misty Rainforest. Go and find a, uh, a land of some kind. It's a basic island. If, if the Jays lifts for one more turn, you can easily find a Golgari Charm or just any kind of spell to, to make it live longer and longer and then the Miracle's uh, opponent just loses. Counterbalance. So you're saying go upstairs, wait a turn, see if you can find an answer to the V-click. Yes, I'm not saying it's... It's, um, it's not incorrect to cast the Jays. No. But uh, I think brainstorming is... Uh, is not necessary in that spot. Or or maybe there's even a line where you don't cast it at all with the knowledge of, of Rendillion Click coming. How about this? Previlium takes eight to draw three cards. Yeah. I like a, a it. Big, big, strong nod of approval yes. from the, uh, the man to my right here. Yes, yes. Always correct. Even when you're on eight. Don't even know why it's optional. No, no, no. It should just be draw three cards, lose eight life. <laughs> I don't even know why it's optional, says Simon Götzen. Okay. W one drop being countered. Blind. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty tight there. So Previliev being attacked now for three. We we'll get his life total updated. Uh, quick smart. I think Jasper might be realizing he Ooh. needs to win a third game. Yeah. So brainstorm in response to the uh, the counter to the, the Sente's divining top here. So blind revealed from the t it's uh, from the counterbalance. It's the second V-click. Found its way to the top of the library here. Brainstorm's going to resolve. Reviliev now down to 11. And Grimmer on a reasonably safe live total of 17. Yeah, and facing only a creeping tar pit. Let's see uh, if Reviliev is going to hold on to some uh, extra cards this time. Taking a little less interesting. A little now. less exciting in the face of Vendillion Click, sure. No, but the, the thing is, if you, if you ignore um, library manipulation for a moment, if you, if you have the life total to spare, it's better to do it earlier because you will get to your relevant cards faster. Yeah. So you don't want to be in the position to be forced to do it uh, later on. So a thought sees here, of course, uh, Grimmer with the option to counter this if he wants. The counter top lock means that... Uh, means that you can, of course, counter any one drop that you that you choose, given the fact that you can flip the top to put it on top. And I think we're going to see Grimmer do exactly that. Draws a Vendillion click, and up it goes to counter the Thoughtseize. Hmm. Did he... He didn't, he didn't check the top of his, of his library, or did no, he? No, he didn't have a look first. That's surprising. Here's the tar pit now. In for three. Grimmer down to 14. That Vendillion click, something of a dead draw for uh, for the German. And two more mana, and it's Tamo Grove number two here. It's Tamo time. This this turn left me a bit a bit confused. Yeah, you don't seem particularly impressed, mate. No, why? Why? Uh, what is the reason of Jasper for not uh, first activating the the? Um, one mana ability of Sensei's Dividing Top to, to see if the Thoughtseize just gets countered uh, naturally. And I'm, I'm not sure if he knows the top three cards of his library already. I don't think so. It's almost impossible to know the top three uh, without having... And the Tarmogov uh, is going to resolve as well. Yes, th this, is the, this is the downside, of course. It, it, might, not, it might not be relevant, but I'm, I'm still... I'm 
a bit confused. So we've got a 6-7 Tarmogoyf after that sorts to Plowshares uh, exiled the Creeping Tar Pit. All right, we're going to move away from this game right now as uh, we've got a... a We've had a judge call called on this match, and we're going to have a, an intervention from the judge. We'll, uh, we'll bring you more news as we actually get it. But right now, we're going to move away from this match while the, uh, while the issue is sorted out. So let's head over to our other table, Nicholas Kronberger versus Roman Leonov. Oh, no, sorry, it's Martin Neuser and Julian Stieler. We saw these... Uh, we've seen Martin Neuser cr absolutely crushing it here. And look at this start. How about a turn one night of the reliquary, uh, uh, Zimon? 4-4 four, four already against Al Jirazi. How about that? That's sweet. That's pretty good. Mox now Diamond. you just need to find uh, Life from the Loam or uh, one of your combo pieces. Mm. I mean, double Mox Diamond is a uh, sweet nice one. start. Absolutely. And we see these uh, these punishing night decks using the graveyard once again. Discarding two lands, not the worst thing in the world as Swords to Plowshares bites the dust thanks to the uh, Thought Not Seer. Not you a bad response on user, turn two. Yeah, yeah, for sure. User left with a, a lonely grove of the Burn Willows. Dark Confident off the top as well. How's that one to rebuild a little bit? <laughs> a little bit, yes. Or or a little more. Uh, uh, the um, the Knight is already bigger than the commonly played Eldrazi. Yeah. Um, Warping Rail uh, is a card that deals with Confident, but don't know if it's if it's available. No, I can see a uh, number of colorless cards. This is the things you want. We've you become see colorless cards. We're very good at identifying uh, many of these cards. But uh, oh no, I, I'm I'm pretty sure there is a Matari Shaper and another Thought Not Seer. Well, you're much better than me. Um, I can't tell these things apart. But these new Bengal cards. The the card on the very left side is I think a Reality Smasher. All right. And not a Warping Wheel. Okay. Well, there's a Matari Shaper as you mentioned. But I might be wrong. We might get those cards moved. There's a bit of glare on the screen. No, but it's there. reality smash. Oh, you know exactly. Easily, yeah. easily identified. We're going to get that fixed up, though. Here is the Knight of the Reliquary. Goes to a 5-5 now. No attacks from Steel. Uh, su supplementing the, the fast mana of uh, Mox Diamond with, yeah. a, with a top deck Dark Confident is, is pretty much the dream. Pretty nice. There's a basic forest after off that uh, windswept heath. So we've seen the Knight... All of a sudden, just grow to a six-six, and that's going to be a really nice bulwark for uh, for Martin to hide behind. The hometown yes, hero here, he's looking to do dig deep and uh, and put up a strong performance, and uh, this is the way to do it. He's also not not really uh, interested in attacking with the knight. Uh, he just wants the, the game to continue. Uh, this is swords to, swords to plowshares. There, a great uh, a great rip from Bob, and another dark confident as well. How are you feeling about that one? Greatness at any cost, huh? Oh, you know how I feel about paying life for cards. You love it. If you if you could pay more life for fewer cards, you'd do it. There's uh, Swords to Plowshares. That's going to draw Martin user cards. Didn't have to pay any life for that one, so I know you're not too impressed, but still uh, not a bad little recovery. I I, I know I tend to um, tell this story a bit too often, but when uh, Dark Confident first came out, I, I was so happy that I got to resolve the trigger. Mm. I forgot to um, resolve my draw step most of the time. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're happy, I mean you. I, it just felt so amazing to get to get, get a card. Cards, get, a, get a card when you shouldn't get it. Absolutely, I can sympathise with you there. And look at this, Martin Hughes is doing it twice. Unbelievable for him. Mm. He can't in believe in all seriousness, though, if you're on 18 uh, in this kind of deck, you oh, can, you can absolutely afford to do. You're it. bobbing up and down like a boy in the harbour, mate. Al also, your average casting cost is probably around 1.2 or something like yeah. this. So. You can you can keep going for a very long time. So here's a lot of mana. Look at this. This is going to be a, a a huge big endless one there. Yeah, yeah, a seven uh, a seven seven endless one. Eldrazi Temple, Ancient Tomb, and uh, Eye of Ugin all working together to power that out. And I think we're going to see an even bigger Night Ski here. M Martin's game plan is very easy. He he filters <laughs> out he filters <laughs> out uh, all the <laughs> all the <laughs> lands in his deck. Yeah. Uh, has to make sure to always get forests or um, planes. That's the, the one requirement. Mm -hmm. uh, he does exactly that. Could getting also a tiger. Is he keeping one catacombs too? Yeah, he's got a catacombs there as well. I could, could also sacrifice that just to. But even if he draws um, draws another duel, it's it's still a, a fine fine spot. Also, thanks going out to Martin for keeping that little die handy above the top of his uh, graveyard there. Very very helpful for us on coverage. Martin uh, always been uh, very helpful in that regard. 
Dryad Arbor and uh, Liliana of the Vale, the two extra cards. Let's see if he remembers the, uh, the draw step. <laughs> he can't <laughs> have forgotten his draw step. No. Has he forgotten his draw step? Has he done, has he done the Zimon Gertsen? Or are we still on the upkeep? He can't cast any of these cards in the upkeep. This he, is a very he, long draw step. He did have the Thoughtsies in hand already, right? No, no, he needs to draw a card. He needs to draw... He's missed his draw step. Martin User, I think, has actually done what Zimon Gertsen has, uh, has talked about. And I'm not 100% I'm not 100% sure it's on possible. it either, but I'm pretty sure it went reveal, reveal. That's just what happens. It's so amazing. Like, you're already up two cards. Well, yeah, and you just kind of feel, I've got enough cards, I don't need any more. It's, it's just a, a matter of fairness as well. <laughs> Oh, well, there we go. Martin Uzer taking his licks. Must have been okay. He wouldn't miss it. We must have missed something there. Too ex you're so excited about paying three life for that Lily under the veil. No, also, also Martin, a much, much better player than I am. Also, that's Especially so. nowadays. Especially nowadays. Back in the day, could have given him a run for his money. So no, there, like there was probably like three weeks. Yeah, th a three-week period when you're at your, at your best. Here's Savannah now. So Martin News is still happy to sit here, sit behind his huge big brick walls. Yeah, see, now okay. they're talking about it. Yeah. Now they're talking about it. We were right. Give me it. We well, give me it. I think I think he did miss his draw step. I'm I'm not even sure what what the what the current uh He doesn't think he did. Okay, we're receiving news that he doesn't think that he missed his draw step, and I think he'd probably know. All right. This means he, he must have drawn the, the must thoughts. Drawn the thoughts easy, so, yeah. which is entirely possible. So, Liliana of the Vale coming down and going uh, up immediately to four loyalty. What has Stila found on the top of his library? It is Thought Not Seer. Martin is making these Adrazi look, look uh, <laughs> ti <laughs> tiny and irrelevant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when, no, when other decks would have been absolutely crushed by the amount of 4-4s four and 5-5s five and 7-7s. Seven yeah, such is the power of Knight of the Reliquary. So, we're going to see the uh, the Knight grow even more. Away goes that Tiger. And as I was saying, you have to watch your life total too. Now we're getting to the point, yeah, where I want to bring that up. The fact that uh, running out of... Oh, he's a Maze of Ith as well. That's not a bad one. Uh, running out of fetch lands there. Doesn't get a fetch land, but uh, on 11 he can start getting dinged for some serious damage off of these bobs here. Hopefully he'll be hoping to fade, he'll be hoping to fade that, uh, that eventuality, of course. So, here they come. Dark Confident, the old Bob Maher Invitational card. It's 2, and it's 3. Ooh! That's 5 damage. Yeah, he's taking quite a lot of damage. Um, okay. maybe, um, maybe this is the time to minus 2 yourself. Yep. With Liliana. Yeah, yeah. Nice little uh, nice little interaction there. Finds a third Dark Confident. But um, also I think he only has the Dark Depths combo in the sideboard. Okay. And probably didn't bring it in because uh, otherwise Maze of it um, would probably have been a, a Dark Depth. Yeah, I, I, would, I should think so. So here user's going to have to do something, I think, about these, uh, these bobs because they could kill him next turn. Not very likely, but it could happen. So life from the loam is going to kick things off. And we're going to go. We're going to go Bayou Bayou uh, Savannah by the look of things, which does shrink the uh, the night somewhat. So we've still got. It does shrink the night, but it also gives you more fuel mm -hmm. for the night. So oh, it's that's true. So the night's still uh, still sufficiently huge. Six lands left in the graveyard. We're still an 8-8. Eight, eight. It is the biggest uh, biggest creature on the battlefield as it stands. So are we going to see a Liliana Edict here? Uh, you first have to attack with the Confident, right? No, we're not. Okay, oh. discard the Confident. And doesn't attack with them. All right. Why Why have the, the no attacks there? With Confident? Yeah. Oh, you don't have to. There is, there is the matter Reshaper to... Um, to generate some value. Okay. I there could be could be another plan to deal with them. If he just go if, if he just flips Knight Liliana though, it's all over Red Rover. Not if there is a good land to to get. But 
like I said, the the Dark Depths combo is certainly not it, because uh, otherwise I think he would have gone for it already. Here we go. Okay, that's it. And, ooh, there is Dark Con from number four. I think he just likes to live dangerously. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Live fast, die free. He, w he wants to find the <laughs> punishing fire. <laughs> and three too. zero cost cards off the top after that. So dredging the uh, life from I'm sorry to cut you off there. Um, he needs to find punishing fire. Mm -hmm. If he if he does all his problems, more or less disappear. There's also another problem. If he if he actively gets rid of the confidence, uh, he might not have enough blockers. Okay. So he might just he might just lose this this game because he's not drawing enough relevant cards. Cycling the tranquil thicket, Gro Grove of the Burn Willows, the draw. Man, falling on your sword like this. Ah, don't don't it. forget Dried Arbor and uh, Mace of it. Both of these are, 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 also are relevant right. cards. Yeah, sure. Okay, Life from the Loam. Going to bring back just the Tranquil Thicket. Anything else? Making sure that uh, that Knight stays is the biggest creature on the battlefield means that uh, we can have one card come back, two cards come back. So, so now um, Martin will just try to... Um, dredge into Punishing Fire. Yep. At least that's what it looks like to me. Yep. Dredge Arena once again. One, two, and three cards. Did he board out some of them? I don't know. I mean, that's, uh, that, that is a possibility against a, a deck full of four fours and five fives. But he's really looking for it, isn't he? So, discard. Got Liliana on six. Maybe he targets himself with Liliana. And, uh, Ultimate? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, surely you just sacrifice. So you just eat it then. Life from the loan once again. Bring back the uh, tranquil thicket. D dredge creating a somewhat repetitive uh, board states. Yep. And we're going to see now. I imagine shift the turn. Man. And then hope for at least one land, right? Stila here. I don't think has done a single point of combat damage. The 16 damage that user has no, taken has been no. entirely self-inflicted. Turn one, uh, turn one. Knight of the Reliquary held off everything. <laughs> it did, as it, as it is wont to do. And now Stila is, yeah. He just he can just wait. Yeah. Or he he just has to wait. So here is the, uh, tr the cycling the tranquil thicket. Going to dredge life from the loam here. Oh no, it's in his hand. No, no, there it is in the bin. Yep, dredge that. Badlands, Zenith, and Sylvan Library. So, user, what is on the top of his library? Let's have a look. Trigger, trigger. The first one, Knight of the Reliquary, and the second one, Mox Diamond, all down to one. Down to one, Zimon Gertsen. I, I'm on the edge of my seat here. I can't this believe is it. Un this is he still hasn't found anything of relevance. He hasn't found anything that's going to get him out of this spot. I think he's going to have to Liliana himself, but then he dies to damage. But also... If he kills one confident, he's still very likely to die. No, no, eat it like the the ultimate Liliana himself. Uh, just to get rid of them. Yeah. This is so intense. This is this is super super intense game. What was this? You're then giving him some dice? For what? <laughs> dice says six and three on it. Not sure what's going on there. Jeez. One billion million cards in hand. Edict. Target. <laughs> oh no! Are we going to see? Are we going to see a Liliana activation? No, we're not. Okay, so yeah. it's just well, uh, it's, it's an activation, it's an activation, but not, not, but a, not, not the not ultimate, not the biggest one. No. So here's knight number two. That's another. That's a nice little blocker there as well. Mox diamond, powering those knights up as, as well, just a little bit. Yeah, could also see a wasteland. I I honestly thought that the line had to be uh, to dredge even more. Yeah. Uh, just to just to maximize the chances of finding. That's what we're seeing here. Tranquil thicket coming back to hand. Doesn't care for anything else. I think Martin uses. Grove of the Burn Willows is tapped here, though. It is, in fact, tapped up the top of your screen. You can just see the uh, the top of it there. Mm, the, oh, he played the Wasteland, okay, but maybe the Knight of the Relic could uh, 
could fix that. I can get a second one, sure. So, Cycle Tranquil Thicket. This is where this draw engine really comes into play. It's uh, super interesting to see it here. But if we, if we look at this, this exact game... Oh, and now the cards are being dredged off the screen, raising the tension even more. Let's get a look at those cards if we can from the, uh, from the graveyard there. How, how happy is Martin to have a four loyalty Liliana as opposed to not having it and not having the, the Dark Confident? It's the, line he it's the line he chose there. But did he just choose it because he didn't see the, the minus six option? or uh, No, because he, he, he was fingering the dice. He picked it up. He thought about it. I think that it was, he can see, I think he's either confident that he can get rid of it or that he's just going to flip a zero. He, he stopped fetching lands to... Uh, yeah. Okay, here's another life from the loam now. But he's also cutting it really close, right? He has... Uh, cutting it super fine. He has now. I, I think he needs to. He needs to reveal a, a, a zero now. It has to be. The, yeah, exactly a zero. He has Dryad Arbor, and a Maze of It, but he needs both of them. If um, Stiele activates the Mishra's Factory, he has five attackers. Yeah, he's gonna have to flip a zero here. Martin, use no, it. but <laughs> no, but if Stiele attacks with everything, of course you you lose you the confidence. Oh, you block with the confidence. So Stiele can't actually attack and as long now, as oh, and we're now in turns just at another uh, another layer to this here and we're seeing Stiele here tapping mana is this the Eye of Ugin activation? Eye of Ugin activation and a Simeon Spirit Guide powering that out ah ok I was uh, exactly because the the Eldrazi Temple can be a bit confusing Yeah, you can activate um Abilities of colorless Eldrazi, but not of Eye of Ugin. No, it can't do Eye of Ugin. But it can do Eldrazi Displacer. Yes. So it can be a bit confusing. Now. <laughs> so Reality Smasher has been searched up by Stiele. He can't believe his luck. He hasn't had to do anything. Bit of a holiday for him here, round eight. Sit back and watch his opponent uh, crucify himself with the. Uh, Dark confidence. Karakas is not going to do it. Maze of Earth is already in play. Wasteland. Wasteland. Yeah. We've only seen one. Yeah, Wasteland. Three copies of Wasteland remaining in user's deck here. That's it. If Stiele attacks with everything, yeah. he might be more likely to lose than if he just lets the confident trigger resolve. How is that? He's got six attackers, however. Yes. Yeah. And, and now, Kound. And now user has five blockers and a Maze of Ith. No, four, no, four, four blockers, blockers, a Maze of Ith, yeah. and the Surprise Wasteland, if there is one in his deck remaining. Oh, of course, because it can be... And a, you can do it, can it after blockers. It can be searched for by the Knight of the Relicry. Ah. And I think Stiele might kill the Confident that could defeat yeah. user in turn two of extra turns. Oh, dismember, or though. Or... Or it's just over. Or it's just over Red Rover. Stiele down to 11. The order of the day seems to be attacking your own life total here. Oh, your face is screwed up in concentration. I can see some number crunching going on in those. Uh, you, uh, you can sacrifice uh, the Dryad Arbor, of course, in response with um, Knight of the Reliquary, but uh -huh. that just removes two blockers, so yeah. it's not going to be... Honestly, I think Martin had to, had to just get the Reclamation Sage into play at some point. Just as a block, just yeah, as a two one. Just to um, you have to be able, you have to make make the situation in a way that Julian is almost always just barely killing you, <laughs> so that he is incentivized to attack into the confident. Yeah, but you survive just just barely. Yeah, he's tranquil thicket. Draw a card. It's punishing fire. That it's it's too little too. No, late. that's that's. Uh, it's punishing and fire. it's super close. It's super close too. If he had one more mana, he would he would survive with the wasteland and the uh, the punishing fire dealing with uh, matter reshaper. Man, he needs radiant fountain. Yeah, so, something like I was looking at all the lands and yeah. I couldn't find anything. Uh, maybe even a, a Vesuva or, or something could yeah. have done it uh, if he had the um, 
if he had the Dark Depths combo in, in his deck in this game, it would have been a breeze. Yeah, would have been super easy to, uh, to finish things off. But as it is, user has, uh, has tried to pay the, po the cost of greatness, and this cost has turned out to empty his account. Just a little bit too much credit put on that bill. But if you if you had dealt with your own confidence with the with the Liliana, yeah, wouldn't you have had more mana, yeah, um, and options because you didn't have to do all this grinding with life from the low? Yeah. Hey, it's it's just exactly not enough. You can fetch, um, <laughs> you can fetch a wasteland, and another land, and then you can either wasteland or cast punishing fire. But you can't do both. Can't do both. He's one mana short. Oh, man. Oh, man. So, of course, yeah, we can fetch out two uh, fresh untapped lands with the Knights of the Reliquary there. But uh, one mana short. And all, only because of the Dismember. Yeah, the Dismember was what... The Otherwise... And, you, and it's Sheila's last card. It was, it was freshly drawn off the top. I think it was top deck, yeah. Freshly it must drawn. have been It must have been because of the Liliana. And because of the, uh, no, mostly because of the real reality smasher was fetched with Ayavugan. Ayavugan, yeah. He is okay. doing something. We Does he see. have mana in his pool now? So no, there wasn't. There was. There wasn't an untapped land, right? No, somewhere no, I don't think so. somewhere hidden. I don't think so. There was a dried up that was gone to, to cycle the tranquil thicket here. Oh man, look at this. Right down to the wire here. Can user uh, get through it? Yep. Away goes the Mistress Factory. And he's using this to look through his deck to see if he can find anything that's going to get this, uh, this matter reshaper out of the way. Insane. Absolutely insane. Anything that will untap the Maze of Ith will do it as well. I don't think there's anything. No, look at that. The concession from Martin User <laughs> taking 19 damage from his own cards. And before uh, Julian Stieler, as we say, having a bit of a holiday in the tropics there. Tremendous game. Absolutely incredible to showcase Love some it. of these cards. My goodness me. We're back at our uh, Jasper Grimmer and Alexander Previliev uh, uh, match here between uh, Miracles and Shardless Sultai. These guys have been given a bit of extra time uh, due to the judge calls. You can see that there is, uh, they're in turn number four of extra turns here. So it looks like things will be wrapping up pretty quickly. Gideon Ally of Zendikar, not the first time we've seen him gracing uh, our screens today, Zimon. Very powerful uh, option, especially, and we've talked about this, at the four slot, uh, immune to Abrupt Decay. Yes, but is it enough to, to close out the game? Previliev on six. Both, both of these players playing decks that don't have a lot of reach. If this is Previliev's turn, I mean, he's just got to try to... Uh, Eke out the last points. It looks like he can do... Oh, he can do five. Yeah, but Jasper is on nine. So I think I think he just has to survive. He he won't be able to win this. Shardless Agent. Let's have a look. It's a pith... Ooh, a pithing needle. All right. <laughs> I'll name Gideon, ally of Zeneca. So now Alexander is uh, in a dominant position, but doesn't have the, the one or two turns he would have needed to, no. uh, to close out this yeah, game. Yeah, certainly from this point, it looks uh, it looked pretty... Uh, like the... the, the Guy on the right would be favoured. Previliev would be in a pretty good position here, but Grimmer now uh, unable to really do anything other than just... Uh, looks like it's just going to be a draw. Yep, there we go. Fizzling out into a rather tame draw here, and the uh, shake of the hand sealing the deal now for round number eight. That's that. You can see the rather disconsolate face of Martin User there, considering the choices that he's made this round. Uh, going all out, really, with those dark confidence. But, uh, yeah, what a round of magic we've seen, Simon Götze. Awesome. Really, really good stuff. So, my friends, it's time for us to uh, take a quick break. We'll be back with more magic before you know it. Round number eight, all done and dusted here at GP Prague. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more Legacy before you know it. See you soon. <laughs>